of the year by the Times and Sunday Times Good University Guide. So well done, guys. That's kind of a cool accolade to have. Um, I am partial to Bath itself just because it's such a beautiful place. <laughs> um, so I'm sure the uh, the presenting committee today being joined by Ruth Roberts Chin, Sid Singh, and two current scholars based at the University of Bath who will talk a little bit more about their experience. Um, we'll be able to share a bit more about the academics available at the university. Thanks for joining us today, guys, and onward and ready when you are. Great, thanks, Stephanie. Um, good morning and good afternoon. Um, my name is Ruth and I work in the International Relations Office at the University of Bath. Um, it's really great to have this opportunity to share some information with you about the university. Um, I'm joined by Sid from our international recruitment team and two current American students, Ali, who is a Marshall Scholar doing a master's in gender and politics, and Leah, who's both a master's student in international education and globalization, as well as a colleague of mine as she works part time in the international relations office. So there's so much we can tell you about the University of Bath. And as Stephanie already mentioned, we really do enjoy talking about our status as the University of the Year 2023. Um, so you'll hear a bit more about that during the presentations. Um, but Sid will give you more detail shortly. But um, first, I just want to play a quick video to give you a bit of a taste of the university. And hopefully, if I can get that to work. This is where your journey begins. A journey you won't take alone. In a place to belong. Where moments are savored and ideas come alive. Where you can play and be inspired Be welcomed and supported with lecturers and tutors teaching alongside industry, affecting society with their research. Be immersed in a city with history to unearth and local gems to discover. with safer streets to see the small hours in and doors that open into jobs, industries and opportunities. Welcome to the University of Bath. Your journey starts here. All right, so um, after Sid has um, given you a bit more detail about the university, then we'll talk to Leah and Ali about their experiences. So thanks, Sid, over to you. Okay. Thank you, Ruth. Try to share my screen now. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, it's coming through. Great. Thank you. Okay. Bef so I'll try to cover why the students should choose Bath. And before I begin, just a quick introduction uh, for me. Um, you can call me Sid. I work in the admissions and recruitment team for postgraduate students. I've also done my master's from Bath and I worked in the students union. So I've stayed over at Bath because I loved it so much. Um, so yeah, feel free to stop me at any point. Ask me any questions. If you have any, I'll be more than happy to answer them. All right, let's begin. By Bath. Right. So first of all, I try to cover a couple of things that are about Bath City and how the rankings are how, and what the university can offer to the students. All right. So first of all, where is Bath located? So to those of you who haven't been to Bath or UK, um, you can see the map of the UK on the right side of the screen. Um, 
so if you know where London is, we are about 80 minutes from London. I know that quite a lot of students when I visit overseas students and quite a lot of them ask us about where where are you located? How can can we go to London? Can we visit other places? So yes, they can. We are very close by to London. Um, train is the easiest way to get to the Heathrow Airport and we also uh, provide free coach collection services, etc. Et to the students who are coming here for the first time. And overall, we have every year more than 18,000 students, out of which 74% are undergraduate students, and then we've got 16% postgraduate taught, and 10% research uh, students, which includes PhD students as well. And normally around 30% of all students are international students, which means that there's a lot of diversity around the campus. And it tends to change a change every year, depending on where the students are coming from and what kind of course area where we've got the most interest from as well. Okay, so now coming to the rankings. Um, so Bath is a triple top 10 UK university um, across all UK league tables. And recently as it was, told earlier we have been named the first university in terms of student experience and also um, the Sunday Times University as well and when it comes to talking to students a lot of them want to focus on employability and see if they'll be able to get a job or not for them um, we are ranked top 100 in graduate employability rankings 2022 and yes this is our recent award which were which we were awarded very very recently so very very proud of that Okay, so when it comes to subject areas, forget top 10, we are ranked in top five overall for a lot of the other subjects. So depending on where the interest is coming from, we are very well known for psychology in the UK, marketing, architecture, whatever it may be. So whatever we do, we are doing it really well. Um, but we don't do, uh, we don't have a law school or a medicine school. So apart from these two things, we have rest, almost all of the rest of the courses as well, as you can see on the screen. OK, so all of our teaching is provided by world class researchers that are currently working in the field. So it's not that they have been out of the industry, so they are currently in the industry and they are conducting their research on the upcoming project. So it's freshly updated each and every year. And we have more than 80 research centers and groups spanning many, many fields. And all of these research fields are used in everyday lecture theatres, whatever the research area may be, mechanical engineering, biosciences or management. Yeah. So why a student should come to Bath? So first of all, international connections. A lot of international students do come to study in the UK or to Bath so that they can experience other culture and meet more friends. That was one of my reasons why I came to study in the UK so that I'd be able to experience the diverse background here. And the university is also well known for its employment skills that it provides CV editing, whatever it may be. I'll come, uh, I'll try to explain it later down in the presentation. And the university also makes the students work ready by offering options such as placements or internship options as well. All right, so this is a quote um, from the University of Bath Charter, and these are some of the companies that we, we work with. Uh, quite regularly. So as you can see, the objects of university shall be to advance learning and knowledge by teaching and research and more focus on inflows association with industry and commerce. So as I keep on repeating more and more, the real focus is on the students, students employability and giving them the skills that they need in real life when they go on to work at a company in the future. So now coming on to the facilities and the courses and the faculties provided by the university. So overall, we've got three faculties and one school of management and the courses that are offered by the university are architecture, civil engineering, mechanical, electrical, computer science and school of management, whatever the course may be, HR, finance, um, marketing, we have got all sorts of courses available. For you but yes you can visit the website for all the courses that that are available with the university okay so now i'll try to cover a few of the updates that may not be on the website so if you are googling so you may not be able to find these things so i think it's 
good for me to diverge into these things. So the building that you were seeing in the background, that was School of Management that has recently opened up, and that is the single biggest um, investment the university has made to date. Um, and all the students, not the School of Management students, will be able to access all the facilities that are offered within School of Management buildings. Okay. So one thing that I'm going to talk about here are the options, the summer options, which distinguish us from any of the offers that are available currently by the other universities. So these are summer options. So as you know, um, as you know, the degrees in the UK are one year only, and you've got first of all, you've got the first two semesters where most of the teaching is done, and then you've got your summer period where either you do your dissertation or your project work. So instead of the dissertation, now we are providing um, a couple of summer options such as practice track and again a lot of focus on employability. Um, so the students can work as a consultant for a business and a charity group as a part of their degree instead of doing a dissertation, which kind of makes more sense if you are doing a management degree anyways. Okay. The second one is entrepreneurial project. As I was saying earlier, um, we are trying to keep in line with the industry, how it's growing, and, and you are from America, so you know that there are a lot of startups, um, Silicon Valley, and even in India and other countries, there are so many startups coming through each and every day. So now the students can try to launch a startup as a part of their degree, um, and this the school will help them to develop this idea, and maybe if it's a good idea, they'll fund them as well. And the final option is a summer internship, although it is a very short time, uh, about two months, but for a master's degree that kind of makes sense so that they can develop soft skills with a paid internship that is provided by the university as well, even for a master's degree. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about our research facility for engineering. Um, this is for companies such as Tesla or all the formula cars are designed in this building and all the researchers kind of work here in this building. They are also the people who will be teaching the students on their degrees and the students also get um, access to these facilities as a part of their study. Um, so yes, it is in line with the industry again. All right, so now coming to the basics, how can a student apply? And maybe you know this information already, but I'll just repeat it for quickly for about two minutes. OK, so that students can apply any uh, on any code by visiting any course page by any time every year between September to July. And it takes us about four to six weeks to process their master's application. And within four to six weeks, the students should accept their offer if they have been given an offer. And again, every year there are multiple scholarship deadlines um, that are offered to the students so they can apply to all of them. But considering that you're a Marshall Scholar, you may not need to. OK, and then accommodations, they start in middle of June and the final scholarship deadline is July. And finally, the students start arriving at the end of September, and that's when all the activity starts as it's fresh as week, postgraduate wine and cheese night, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Now talking about the very important part that is the student life. Um, and I'm sure the students who are here with us um, today, they have used some of these services as well. Okay. So this is our beautiful campus, as you can see in the background. Um, and it's surrounded by the countryside, so it's very beautiful. Um, so as you can see on the screen, this is, and it was also shown in the video, this is our sports training facility, which is accessible for free um, for all the students. Other than the gym, you don't need to pay for anything. Maybe if you wanted to play badminton, you can just book the court, rent a racket and start playing. Um, and there are plenty of cafes, um, eating places, art center around the campus that's available there as well. Um, and if the students maybe miss their home food, then there is a, a small shopping center on the campus so that they can buy those things there as well. Yeah. Talking about postgraduate accommodation, I know that this is something that a lot of students are generally every year concerned about because they are coming from overseas and have never lived in the UK before. 
So the University of Bath provides guaranteed accommodation to all of the postgraduate international student if they have been accepted by the university and it's as long as they apply by the deadline. And we offer on campus and off campus accommodation according to whatever their preference is by the university. Okay. Now coming to the student support. So there are a couple of things that we provide from the university. For example, if I'm not sure that the American students <laughs> will struggle with the English or not, so we can't ignore that part, but we do provide one to one guidance, whatever it may be, like I was saying earlier, if it's CV editing or mock interviews, they can just book a one to one appointment with um, the careers counselors. There's welfare support as well, a lot of focus on mental health. All of these appointments are bookable one to one and the student union also runs services that are available 24 hours, maybe in odd hours as well. And there's a glo global alumni network that the current students can access after they graduate, maybe if they're going to work in any other country or US or Thailand so that they can connect and assess how the jobs are like. And we also offer immigration advice to our current students or the ones who are going to join us. There are multiple. Uh, there is a faith room on campus. If you wanted to pray, only you will have the access to access that room. So yes, support is there at every each and every stage. And there is medical facility on the campus as well. So when you come here, when you register with the NHS, if you have a medical need, if you let us know, then yes, you can go to your GP on the campus as well and off campus. Career support. So this is a very important part of a master's student's life, um, especially international ones, as they a lot of them do want to work in the UK, at least for maybe one or two years after they have graduated. So the career support is available um, for lifetime, which is offered by our career service to all the students that are there at the university. So at any point of time, one to one appointments, workshops, career fairs, um, if they want helped in getting a part time job so that they can get some experience or if they want to start their own business, they can book all of these one to one appointments free of course, any point during the working days and the career services are more than they are very welcoming and you can also go and see them in the office as well if you wished to. Okay. Student union. Yeah, this is the fun part of the university, as I think all of you will agree as well. Um, so there are four to five to six student union officers that represent the student union body, and I was one before this role as well. Um, there are plenty of volunteering opportunities available that are advertised through the students union, and there are about 140 clubs and societies. And suppose there is one society that we may not have, uh, for example, maybe Waffle Society, that was a recent addition <laughs> um, to the student union um, services that are offered. So two students came together. All you need is three students and the student union will offer you the funding and then you can start your own society. Yeah, but they can also try other things out. Kickboxing, coffee society, netball, uh, whatever is their cup of tea really. Um, yes, but you can visit the website here, the link, um, so that you can see what kind of societies there are available. There are cultural and different faith societies at the university as well. Yeah. So these are some of our sports facilities. Like I was talking earlier in 2018, awarded Sports University of the Year Award. Um, we are very well known for our sports facilities and like I was saying earlier, these are accessible completely for free by all the students. Um, swimming pool is Olympic size. Um, they can also book coaching classes if they are new to the sport, if they do want to access it. And I'm, I'm just mentioning this here, but we we got about 11 gold Olympic medals in Tokyo 2020 um, Olympics as well. So as you can see, um, the sports facilities are very, very good, and there's a lot of focus on students' mental health and their physical health as well at the university. Okay. And if the students are interested in arts, there's a 10.5 million pounds center on campus for students to practice for the arts. Again, all they need is go to their web page, book their music practice rooms or dance studios, whatever they want to practice, and it's all bookable completely for free for all the students that are there at Bath. Okay, now coming to the city 
And like, like the host was saying earlier, but you can be partial to Bath because it is such a beautiful city, as you can see in the background. So it's the UK's only UNESCO World Heritage City. And the picture that you see in the background, that's the Roman baths. And it has the hot water running um, throughout the day. And that's why it's, the city is called Bath. And it is one of the safest universities in the UK. So if you are worried, if the students are worried about their safety, they don't need to be also on top of this. The students get a library card and on the back of it, there's a security number which are available 24 seven. If they have a problem in getting into their room or if they are stuck somewhere in the city, they just need to give a call to the security services and they'll be there in no time. Yeah, and these are some of the views of the city, as you can see, so that um, you can get an idea of where the students will be when once they join us. And this is the Royal Crescent. I'm trying to give you a virtual tour. And this is the Bath Abbey where the student graduation ceremonies are held. And on the right side of it, the Roman baths, that's where the scholarship ceremonies are held as well. So the students, all of them, they get um, they can access these facilities. And again, if the postgraduate students, if they're living in the city accommodation, they can easily reach the campus from in 15 to 30 minutes. And like I was saying earlier, all of those attractions that you were seeing in the background that are those are accessible for free um, for all the students who ever are studying with us. And the estimated cost of living in Bath is about 17,000 pounds a year. But when I was here a student two or three years ago, um, you don't tend to spend that much. If you're going out a lot, 17 is the maximum amount that you're probably going to spend. Um, but yeah, that's the overall estimate of what you're going to spend here as a student. Okay, yeah, again, some pictures. And that's it. That brings to the end of the presentation. I will Thanks, and it over to Ruth back. <clears throat> I think one of the important things you didn't mention about Bath is that it um, was where a, quite a lot of Bridgerton was filmed. Ah, OK, <laughs> OK. I'm sorry, but I didn't watch it yet, so I... <laughs> um, thanks, Sid. And um, Leah and Ali, thanks so much for participating in this session. I think um, it's really important that we hear from you today because um, we can talk, we can say a lot of things about the university, but you can really share from actual lived experience. Um, so just to start off with, um, it would be great to hear from both of you. Perhaps Ali can start and then Leah to um, tell us why you chose Bath and then a little bit about your experience studying here. Absolutely. Um, so I am coming from the Air Force Academy where I did um, an engineering undergraduate degree. Um, and then I moved to the UK to do um, a master's degree in politics, gender and politics. So I've kind of had three big transitions of the US to the UK, uh, engineering to politics and uh, military to kind of civilian life for a little bit. Um, and I chose Bath because it had an excellent degree program that also allowed for my uh, different background of having engineering as a background uh, while also letting me st study at that higher level of the master's degree, which not all um, universities do or, or are able to do really. Um, but Bath does and it was it was an excellent choice. Um, some of the things that I've really loved about it is just that it's, you know, uh, it's it's there's so much to do and yet it's, it is you know kind of a little bit quieter than maybe london might be or you know and i i felt completely safe in my time here and just so so comfortable in bath um i would also say that uh like bath itself is just gorgeous i've loved every moment living here especially um you know they don't they're not joking about the fact that it rains here like all the time in the uk uh but now that we're in the summer i mean it's it's sunny outside my window right now and it's gorgeous so loving the beautiful buildings, the beautiful area around it. Um, and something that really, really made me feel comfortable was the student union led uh, Freshers Week, just having a ton of different interactions with different students there. I actually did meet Leah during that first week um, and it, it just made it so that I had no problem settling in and getting to enjoy my time really rather than feeling nervous. So yeah, I think that's all I'll say to start with. Thanks, Ali. Leah. 
Yeah, um, I mean, Ali said a lot of the a lot of the reasons that Bath is a great place, um, and some of the reasons that I chose it as well. Um, so I'm coming from a background of kind of working in a variety of nonprofits. Um, I worked in the Peace Corps for a little bit. And I am pivoting to focusing on international education. And so for me, one of the highlights um, for Bath is the kind of international nature of the university itself. Um, as Sid kind of said, 30% of the students here are international and you can kind of see that and feel that on the campus, uh, which I appreciate because that gives me more interactions with people from all over the world, which um, is a really important aspect for me. Uh, but another reason is just the location. Um, like Ali said, Bath is stunning, especially right now. She wasn't kidding. The, the weather right now has been perfect for the last like two, three weeks. Um, it's hard to sit inside right now <laughs> because Bath is so beautiful. Um, and as Americans, I feel like we don't really have cities like this. Um, and it's kind of nice to to be in a place that's so historical and everywhere you go and everything you see and it has that history just innately as part of it. Um, and as Sid said, everything is free for the University of Bath students. We kind of get into everything um, just by being students. And so it's kind of nice to be able to um, experience all that history firsthand as well. Um, so those are some of the reasons that I chose it. Uh, my degree program is pretty small as well and uh, pretty specific. So there aren't a lot of universities that offer it. Um, and so it's nice that Bath does have the ability to provide such specific degrees um, and really kind of guide you towards the very specific career paths that you want. So I appreciate that as well. Thanks, Leah. And have you, how have you found the lectures and the course materials? Um, do you have any professors that you've particularly enjoyed um, listening to, working with? Yeah, I mean, in my degree program, um, all of our professors, so the university itself is a research center for international education, which is really great for me. Um, so a lot of the professors here are kind of top in the field as well and do their own research. Um, and so they have all been very knowledgeable um, and very kind of up to date on most of the like main topics in the field is a pretty broad field. <laughs> um, so having access to kind of all of that has been really nice. Um, I also like that there's a little bit of variety, like we talk about the, the general field, but also have some very specific classes that really kind of lend towards my background um, and having professors who've kind of had hands on experience in international development and education and, and those more specific fields um, and having their kind of viewpoint as well has been really nice because sometimes professors are just researchers, but we also have professors who are who have been in the field and been working in, for me, international education or international development. Um, and so they bring a lot of perspective to the field for me. Thanks, Leah. And, and Ali, how have you found the lectures and the course materials and the, the professors? So something that I'm really grateful for is just how moldable the degree was to my interests. Um, I am trying, I'm, I'm mostly interested in how um, we retain women in the military. And that's kind of a very specific thing that there aren't many degrees for, <laughs> if any, out there. Uh, so the gender and politics bit is is so that I can study gender and and how we um, you know look at that and especially in the workplace. Um, but the interesting thing with the politics bit was that I was able to work in a lot of international security, international relations classes, and I've absolutely loved having both of those sides of things. Going from my you know conflict and conflict resolution class to my gender theory class and seeing how I can find you know the the um, the meeting point between those two topics um especially kind of to echo something that leah said was that uh one of my professors the conflict and conflict resolution class you know he's he has been part of actually resolving conflicts so you get to ask questions to someone that's been there firsthand and uh you know that's exactly my sort of thing stuff that i'm very very interested in and how women can impact that especially so um, I found them to be very specific into certain areas that I'm interested in and be able to weave together a narrative of 
all the things that I'm really interested in to find a, a way forward for my dissertation um, that, I'll, that I'll be writing this summer. So. Can you tell us a bit about the any of the mentorship or guidance that you've got while you've been at Bath from this from the faculty or staff? Yeah, so something that I was kind of told to be prepared for um, was that the UK schools might not, you know, be able to uh, give as much one on one guidance or help as my undergraduate university did. Um, and I found that to be completely the opposite at Bath. Um, I was assigned a personal tutor right from the start that was um, able to help me with anything that I needed um, to include like, you know, I needed to ask how do I write a politics paper? Because I really didn't know how to do that. Or what is a dissertation? What does that look like? Um, and so he was able to help me a lot, especially in that first semester. I met with him all the time. Um, and I haven't needed to as much since he gave me so much guidance last semester. I haven't needed it as much this semester. Um, but the instructors themselves as well with uh, any essays and stuff, I can always meet with them and ask them questions. Um, you know, have them proofread and outline for my essay, and they're always super happy to do that. Um, and I've, I've just kind of found that, you know, there is the, you're a master student, you're expected to, to want to uh, be learning about these things. So it's not like someone's dragging you, you know, trying to pull you across the finish line. But if you're asking for the help, um, you know, all the instructors, all the faculty are super determined to help you succeed. And what about the facilities? Um, have you found that the library and we, we saw some of the sports facilities on earlier, have they been able to contribute towards your student experience? So something that's been crucial for me has been figuring out where I can study best. Because um, as an engineer, like a lot of my work was in the lab uh, when I was an undergraduate. And so now I'm like, how do I sit down and write an essay? Found out that at home, I don't do well at all. Um, I get distracted way too easily. Thankfully, Bath has a ton of solutions. So I live in the city center, which is a little bit away from the campus. Um, there's a, a building right in the city center where I can book a workspace and sit and work for however long I want, which is great. Um, and they're also on campus are dedicated postgraduate study rooms, as well as the library where anyone can go. But those postgraduate study rooms are perfect because they're quiet, um, plenty of space to work. And um, there's some rooms that are also good for collaboration if you are working on a project with other people. So those things have been crucial for me to get kind of across that finish line of actually writing a 4000 word essay for the first time. Um, and something just kind of on the more fun side of thing, things, I was determined that this year I would try to learn the piano. Um, and something that was really fun was those uh, bookable um, music study rooms. I've never learned the piano before, but I was able to just book a, a study room for an hour at a time and just go play for a little bit. So just things like that. I mean, the study rooms, great for academics, but, you know, Beth also has fun, you know, tailored facilities for whatever you're interested in. And yeah. also, and to, sorry, the the other aspect is not even at the campus, but also if you're a studier like I am where I can't sit in a quiet space, I have to have things going on around me. There's like six billion cafes in the city of Bath as well that are all very great, excellent study spaces as well. If you're one of those people that has to have like noise. So the university has the facilities, but there's also options in the city as well, which is nice. So Leah, how have you found the balance between the academic side of things and social life at Bath? I have had a great time figuring out that balance. Um, so I know someone has already kind of mentioned the Freshers Week. I know Ali and I met at Freshers Week actually. Um, and so what that is is basically postgraduates and under and new freshmen um, are invited to move into the campus uh, a week before classes start and the SU puts on hundreds of activities throughout that week. I mean it is multiple activities every hour for like seven days straight. It's honestly a, an organizational feat. I was really impressed by it. I went to like at least four things every day. Um, and one of the other things that they have on the campus is, um, as Sid mentioned, all of the different societies and clubs. Um, and so I joined the Wine Society from the Wine and Cheese Night that Sid mentioned. Um, they host the, the, wine, the Wine Society hosts that in Freshers Week. 
Um, and that has been like a highlight for me at the university. Um, it's every single week you do a wine tasting with a variety of different wines that you've probably never tried before. Um, and they also bring in experts in the field to kind of provide not just like a fun time for trying wines, but also an education on how are the wines made? Why did, why does this wine look like this? Why does it taste like this? What is the smelling? Um, they also put together a blind tasting team, which I participated in. Uh, so you get to practice blind tasting for wines as well, uh, which that is a skill for sure. <laughs> um, and so having that, it, as my kind of like break for the week um, after all the academics is done has been really nice. Um, but the university does have like hundreds of societies and clubs for pretty much any interest you might have. Um, and they really, the SU really does encourage you to have that social aspect because obviously the academics are important. Um, that's why you're here. But having that kind of side fun to kind of relieve the stress of academics has been really nice and also very easy to participate in here. The SU is super active on campus. Um, so they make it very easy to kind of just question and say, hey, what have we got around campus? And they'll come up with a million things for you to do. That's great. And, and Ali, um, what about what about from your side, uh, any volunteering or outreach experience that you've been able to do? Yeah, so um, through some of the events that the uh, student union has put on, they, they kind of ho host like fairs for different organizations to come uh, recruit students from that for themselves. Um, and one of the ones that I found was Food Cycle. Um, it's a um, essentially a soup kitchen in, in the middle of Bath and um, anyone that just needs a free meal can come on Wednesday nights. Uh, I've met a ton of other students that way, which has been really fun. I've made some friends there, um, as well as, you know, just kind of feeling useful and kind of in the same way, just, you know, doing doing something that isn't school for a little bit, which is really nice. You know, all I have to do is bring some food out to people and, and chat. And uh, yeah, it's it's a really great time. So that that's been really nice. And I'm really glad that I found that opportunity through, um, through the student union. Um, and something else that I did through my one of my classes actually um, was we worked with a, a, a the nonprofit elector. Um, it works to help um, any women that are interested in running for politics. It's a a, a nonpartisan organization, and um, you know we just kind of put together um, some reading material essentially for them. So the stuff that we had been learning about already, um, and and that was a really cool way to also get a little bit of that uh, experience of what real people in the world are doing out there right now related to our fields, uh, but also just doing some, you know, s sort of volunteer work um, through our class. So, yeah, these things have been really great. And I, I love getting involved with kind of the community here and getting to know. It's also been a great way to get to know uh, people from the UK itself, because as Leah said, like a lot of my classes are very international. So uh, getting to know some more you know, people, some more locals um, and ask them questions about their country and what I should do while I'm here. Um, it's been great. So. Um, OK, my last question, and it's kind of for both of you, is I, I know a lot of students who would be looking at studying in the UK might. Might first be looking at universities in the big cities, probably London. Um, what would you say to students who who are looking to study in the UK about Bath and whether they should consider studying here as an alternative to where everybody tends to to kind of think of when they when they think of the UK? Well, I think I'll kind of reiterate back to like as Americans, we don't have cities like this um, in the US. I mean, for me, I'll I'll go back to my very first moment ever seeing Bath. Um, the university provided a pickup from the airport, which was great, <laughs> honestly. Um, and as we were driving into the city, I didn't realize that we had reached Bath yet. I thought we still had another like hour left on the bus. And so I look out and the, you go, you come into the city and I'm looking out the window and I see this stunning view of this city. That's this all the same color, which you'll learn about if you come here about the Bath stone. Um, and I pulled up my phone. I was like, okay, I have to look and see what city that is so I can remember to come back there because it looks amazing. And I pulled up my GPS and it was like, it was Bath. And I was like, 
oh my goodness, I'm going to be living there. And so just, you know, the university obviously is in a great location. Um, we've kind of talked about a lot of the generous aspects of the university with its academics and with the um, also the social side of it. But I mean, honestly, part of it is just the location is is a huge factor as well. Um, it kind of feels like a fairy tale living in a city like this. Uh, one, and I've never gotten to experience that anywhere else that I've lived. Um, you're also close to Wales. You're close to Cornwall. You're close to London. It's not very far away. Um, Bristol is a really cool city. Um, that that's only 15 minutes away by train. Um, so it's a really easy, you know, if you want to head out for drinks with friends or explore a new place. Um, Bristol is also lovely and it's right around the corner as well. Um, so there's just a lot of variety right here in our little pocket. Um, and I think that that's really beneficial to kind of living and learning in a new country. Yeah, absolutely. I'd echo everything that Leah said. Um, funnily enough, when I was coming to Bath, I did zero research about the city itself. I genuinely just looked at the programs and was really excited about that bit. Uh, and I sort of just, I did it intentionally. I was like, I'm, I'm just going to have it be a surprise. And I remember being just in heaven for the first several weeks that I was here. I'm, I still am. Uh, but just the beauty of the city, how safe it all felt, how, um, how accessible it was to make friends at the university, as well as um, just like all the wonderful things to do within Bath itself. And the reality is I've gone to London several times since I've been here, like you're going to go to London, um, but you might not think of going to a place like Bath, you know, just to visit. So like getting, having that surprise of, of getting to know this city really, really well um, has been perfect. And it's also a great, you know, kickoff point for going and seeing so many other places. I will be going and uh, going down into Cornwall and that'll be an easy trip um, in about two weeks time. And so that's great. Um, you know, and just, I think one other thing is I will actually be moving to London next year. And the one thing that I'm really, really not looking forward to missing is just the amount of green space that's around Bath. I there are giant, giant parks here. The university has um, huge fields around it. It's gorgeous. Um, and there's some really fun hikes to do. One example is the um, the Skyline hike. As Leah mentioned, there, Bath is kind of a bowl um, and the city is, is in the center. So you can kind of hike around the edges of it. And it's just gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I'm getting my, my fulfillment of just rolling green English hills here. So it's really lovely. And uh, yeah, I, I couldn't be happier that I that I came here for my first year. Thanks so much. I, I think um, we've got a little bit of time for questions. So if there are any, um, looks like there is one on the chat for Ali. Is your time in Bath part of your military duty? I ask because we have a ROTC. I'm assuming you know what that means. I do, yes. Um, <laughs> So it is, I graduated from the Air Force Academy, um, which is essentially as soon as I graduated, I became a, a second lieutenant and officer in the Air Force. Um, I am slotted to become a pilot after this. And uh, typically right now, the wait times for pilot training are a little bit backed up. Um, and so the Air Force, especially the Air Force Academy is very eager to get its students out to graduate school. Um, and so I am an officer right now and I'm um, like technically employed as such, but then through the Marshall Scholarship, I was able to come spend uh, two years here. And I, I know several other, I don't know any other ROTC people in my in my year right now, but there are six other military um, military scholars from the, um, the other uh, service academies. So it, there, there are certainly some military people here. Um, it just depends on uh, kind of that that chain of command approval process. Like I said, the Air Force Academy really tries to enable it, but it might be a little bit different for ROTC. Are there any more questions for Sid or Leah? Um, I have a question for for you, Ali. Um, it's a bit. Um, 
not selfish, that's not the right word, but we've just launched the 2024 Marshall application. And obviously you've been through it, you're a Marshall Scholar. Um, you've just like eloquently said how you've had a really nice time at Bath. So I just wondered if you had any advice for, um, I think we've got fellowship advisors on the call. So, you know, a way that they might talk about Bath to their Marshall applicants or for we're putting this on the website so you know someone who's thinking of applying can can watch these videos so yeah just any advice I guess specifically for the Marshall application and considering Bath and maybe like research to do before the application in terms of looking at Bath's courses and things like that. Absolutely I mean I think the wonderful thing was really how the how I could get this specific degree here. Not every university offers gender uh, or degrees in gender uh, studies. And so like that was wonderful. And then being able to mold it further to be kind of international security focused and stuff like that. Um, so I think a big thing that I didn't really think about at the beginning was just how much I could leverage that with my Marshall application was, was talking about the programs themselves. Uh, but then also, um, Kind of talking about just the things that you're interested in learning about the UK itself um, and and how that can help you become a better you know ambassador that embed embed wow I can't speak um ambassador I can't say it ambassadorial ambassadorial, <laughs> ambassadorial. thank you so much <laughs> potential all the letters are getting mixed up um that potential um you know trying to to think about maybe getting to know something other than just London as kind of the the stereotypical or or Oxford or Cambridge, you know, because there's those big three or like, you know, the triangle that they, they talk about on the application. So if you're trying to think of something outside of the UK, getting to know the heart of the UK just a little bit more, um, stretching your feelers out just a little bit more rather than kind of the default. Uh, Bath is just a lovely, lovely place to be. And um, I think that's kind of a, a great angle, not only to talk about, but really to think about when you're when you're considering which school you want to apply to. Thanks, Ali. That's really helpful. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Leah. Um, I just I knew Ali had had the experience. I didn't mean to to cut you off. But... All right. Can I um? I don't think we've got any more questions. Can I hand back to Stephanie if there's anything else that you would like to mention from the Secretariat side? Yeah, I was just going to say thank you to everyone for joining us today. Thank you, um, Ali, Leah, Ruth, and Sid on your wonderful presentation. Um, if I was going to do a master's, I would definitely hop along to Bath because it sounds like a pretty cool place to live for a year, not only because it's beautiful, but also the programs sound great too. So you have sold me. Well done. <laughs> Um, but I wish you guys all the best. Um, I thank everyone from the NAFA community that have joined us today, and I wish you all a successful coming summer. Um, and Ali and Leah, all the best with your dissertations. Good luck. Um, you'll get over that hill, I promise. <laughs> and yeah, thanks everyone for attending today and have a good one. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. You Bye. too. Bye.